Well, this is the point. This is the moment everyone I've been waiting for. Uh, and getting up at six o'clock this morning is definitely going to be worth it. Morning, Andrew. Yeah. Let's just check if I need Right. So now I have to, um, I have to tell these nice ladies and gentlemen here why I have asked you uh, to get up at uh, six in the morning to talk to me about a new project. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and travelling to the remotest parts of the world. Well, you know, this is this is your weekend. You know, Cape Townians and uh, and people in Perth and Australia, most of them, not all, take the weekend from Friday afternoon. So thanks for giving up the weekend. But I'm actually I got up this morning. I was probably awake around five. And uh, I drank a coffee and raced out the door. It's beautiful because there's no traffic. And it's a lovely, misty Cape winter's, well, summer morning. Wonderful. So let's it's see what you've got to say. Okay, so now, the audience now watching this doesn't know. You, you don't know. know. You're no. the first person I am telling about this new project. So I'm hoping that they are going to react with you. <laughs> I can't wait. Do you remember how much fun we had? in 2019 building the Land Cruiser in Cape Town. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we really, it was a, probably a project that I've really enjoyed for the camaraderie, the sharing. Oh, we, just, we just really did enjoy it. It was great fun. It was brilliant. It, it, I, I, it was absolutely brilliant. Now, I would, if COVID-19 wasn't here right now, send you money for a plane ticket and fly you to Australia to do this project. Wow. But I can't. Well, you know. So here's my invitation, even though I know you can't accept it. <laughs> Thank you. <That's, laughs> and I can promise you, it sounds more and more, more and more exciting now. I, I, you, you've got me sitting on the edge of my chair here, and I'm just—you've got to let the cat out the bag now. You've really got to tell all of us because I want to know. <laughs> the night before last, I woke up in the middle and the dead of night, and I wouldn't say I was in a cold sweat because that would be over dramatizing things, but. I was thinking to myself, Andrew, what have you done? And this is what I've done. <laughs> okay, there is a vehicle sitting in Victoria. It is a Land Rover product. Yeah. yeah. It is 45 years old. Wow, okay. It is absolutely original completely original nothing has been added it has had a small amount of restoration work done it done on it including the engine right but that's all sure what a find okay there's more I have to and this is what I my plan is to drive it 3445 kilometers home to Perth <laughs> I don't think that's going to be difficult for you. It's going to be an incredible drive. Tell me more about the vehicle though. I mean, where, where did it originate? Who's, who owned it? It's had about four owners and the last uh, 11 years um, hasn't been driven for the last 11 years. It, but it was actually, the engine was redone actually very recently. So it's running, it is capable of driving um, and it needs to, you know, obviously I'm going to go there and work on it. but. Um, <laughs> Do you want to know what it is? What do you think it is? <laughs> God, you know, I'm just thinking, when I drove through Australia, and I can't now tell you where, we stopped off at a museum, and there was a very old, and I can't even remember the model now, probably a Series 2A, but no, I don't know, tell me. Come on, get it. I'm, I'm dying with the expectation that everyone's with Here's me. Here's a clue. Now you've got to tell Here's me. Here's a clue. Can you see that on your screen? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what that vehicle, what vehicle that, that is from? Oh, tell me now. Come on, I need, a, I need, a, I need another clue now. <laughs> Here it is. Ta -da -da, this is not going to be an old, an old. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> you know, this is Andrew's passion. He loves these old Range Rovers. You've probably seen him drive one in the past. Now, to get his hands on one of these, I can see why he's like a boy in a candy store. I really can. <laughs> oh my God, this is the actual vehicle. Wow. This is it. It, 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 it belongs to me. 
it, it's mine. You bought it. And I have to say you here, I have to say here, this project actually started about a year ago. Sure. And I was sent this. Excuse me, Paul, I'm just going to speak to the nice people here. I was sent this. It is still sealed. I went looking for my Range Rover. I remember. Your, your original one. Uh, 82. I owned it between 82 and 90. And I, and I actually tracked it down and it was uh, wrecked. It had been wrecked. But the original papers and the builder's plate I found. And they are in this envelope and I have not opened it. And I will not open it until I actually climb into that one. And then I will open my old Range Rover's build plate and I'll stick it on the dashboard with some... <laughs> plastic or something and I will drive this thing to Perth Go on. so that's where it started it actually started that long ago because I just had this this I don't know I, I just wanted to own one again and I didn't know how and as I was saying to you that the the law of attraction just kind of um, works that way if you know what you want yeah. somehow the universe tries to give it to you and and if you're receptive to it and don't fumble too much when things don't work, you just be positive. It tends to deliver things. And this thing fell into my lap. Uh, uh, you know, you, you have talked about, you've talked about a Range Rover because I think it go, really goes back to your childhood memories. And when those deep seated memories sit inside you and you remember back to those old days, the fun days you had, the days the days that took you into the passion of what you've done for the last 35, 40 years. It's just incredible to think that, you know, the, the childhood dream is now being lived again. And I think, you know, for me, it's a lot about dreams. And I often say to people, it actually is a dream that we all should hold on to. The condition of this, Andrew, is incredible. If this is the finished condition, it's brilliant. This is it. Now he's done some re re refurbishment of the inside, the carpets, the driver's seat, uh, but this is absolutely original. And I remember uh, working on our, our Land Cruiser and we, we kind of fumed every time we found something that somebody did to it because so often it's done badly and it was done badly in that case. And this thing is untouched. Wow. And to me, that's, that is why I just was drawn to it. And when I bought my first one in 1982, it had the exact same mileage as this one has now. Oh. 74,000 kilometers. <laughs> exactly the same. It's almost like, How's that for a as you said, the law of attraction. And I, I do believe that when you put things out to the universe and you focus on it and you give it energy and you feel what you want and you really believe it, it does come to you. You just need to be patient. It doesn't always come to you in the way you want. I mean, the number of times you've looked at getting one of these Range Rovers and you put it out there and, and you've landed with what seems to be an amazing, amazing vehicle. Wow. I'm very envious. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, of all the Land Rovers, this is probably the one to own. Well, of all the Land Rover products, the ones that are worth probably the most are the original classic Range Rovers. They really collect very, very high prices. You know. Um, properly restored original classics and this is and this is one uh, with low mileage I mean I had to show you this picture here look at that it's got that steel fan <laughs> it just shows its age you know and I remember when I had my accident with mine the the radiator smacked into the steel fan and I rebuilt it and I took the fan off and I was worried about it breaking so I got it very very hot in a fire extremely hot in a campfire left it in the coals to get as hot as I possibly could and actually tried to pump air in it into the fire to get it hot. Then I whipped it out and I banged it straight with a hammer. And I got it pretty straight and we put it back in the car. <laughs> oh man, they, they, really, they really have got an iconic history, you know, right through to the Darien Gap. Just something else. Oh, I know. The, the, for those of you who don't know, the Darien Gap in 1972, two Range Rover, I think they were suffix A is the same as I used to have. This is suffix D. They, they traversed the, the entire Pan American Highway before it was built, particularly the centerpiece, which was Darien. And, and that just, that to me was the, was just fantastic.
fantastic. It was like Superman. It was like you couldn't get more thrilling than the Darien Gap, even though they broke down. But the fact is that they did and they accomplished it. And it was an amazing, amazing expedition. For me personally, this is something special because all my life, all my life, all my adult life, I have looked forward to seeing one particular vehicle because I, as, a, as a child, I was besmitten with Range Rovers and particularly with Range Rovers that drove from Alaska to Terra del Fuego uh, at the southern end of South America. And after all these years, here is the actual vehicle itself. I finally get to see it after all these years. It's a bit, it's a bit, uh, I made models of it when I was a child. Um, I, I, it was, the, it was, it was everything. It was, it was why I do this. It was why I, I got so involved with four wheel drives and it was this, this vehicle doing that trip. And I've loved them well, ever it took since. took on so much, you know, to, to do, to take on an expedition like that. It was probably uncharted territory for them and, and the enormity of what they had to carry and the equipment and, and you know, to, to undertake something like that is absolutely... Oh, look, just go back that picture with the jack and that. So that you'll enjoy. That's original. That, so if I look at that picture there, that is a oh crank handle God, that if that. you look at the front bumper, there's a hole in the front bumper and that goes through and you can actually crank the engine. And I cranked my one, my previous one, I cranked it. It was flipping hard work. And, I'm, and I got, and I couldn't, when it was cold, I couldn't start it. I tried, not a chance. So I warmed it up. I got it nice and ticking over lovely. And I turned it off and I got there and I started it just because I wanted to see if it worked. And even then it was flipping hard work. <laughs> it was, and I was terrified the thing was gonna spin back and, and, uh, and, and crack me on the knuckles or something, but it didn't, but I remember doing that. But this is original, original stuff. Oh, wow. Gosh, you know, I haven't seen as uh, complete a vehicle in a long, long time. This is, this is um, phenomenal. Wow. So, and also I should mention here that I have had assistance in this project uh, from the um, Off-Road History Museum. Wow. We, we talk about things and they send me stuff. I send them ideas and everything like that. And they heard about this and they said, we'd like to be part. This is what we do. We build old vehicles and we display them. I have over 360 cars in this uh, museum. And we divide it to uh, four sections, three buildings. And this section we have, we, uh, in this building we have two sections, my modified car and the general section, which is the cars, which is uh, unknown. <laughs> you carry on. <laughs> and they said, how can we be involved? So we chatted and they, they made this possible. As a result of my undying love for Range Rover Classics. My entire family now love Range Rover Classics and they were walking along here and they saw this one and they stopped in their tracks. I could almost hear the skidding noises from the other side of the museum. The desire to own another Range Rover Classic was given fuel in 2016 when I drove an identical to mine Suffix A Range Rover in Wales. It brought back such powerful memories that they embedded themselves into my consciousness. It's wonderful. Okay. It's all coming back to me. I mean, it's as if I've never stepped out of it. Yeah, and this is a... They don't make tailgates like this, eh? Oh, I was going to say, see? Different No, that's right. Let's bring back memories, isn't it? No, that's <laughs> Such that in 2019, I went on a search for my own Range Rover and my father's, both in South Africa. Of my father's Range Rover, I could find no trace, but mine, I did. I vowed that if I could find it, I would buy it, no matter its state, and bring it to Australia for a full restoration. When I was informed that it had been scrapped, I mentally shelved the idea. But the good news was that its original build plate was saved, and I managed to purchase it. Then when this Suffix D model came to my knowledge, and the fact that it was so original, 
I made plans to get it. The four-wheel drive history museum intervened and made these plans a reality. It's clear to me now that I'm going to need some assistance from quite a few people and I'm going to start with our good friend Paul Marsh. Uh, also a number of other assistants from them in terms of know-how and stuff like that uh, put us in contact with some of the sponsors who will sponsor spare parts. So we had Terrain Tamer, this time we've got Britpart. You know Britpart very, very well. I do, yeah. My big question to you is, is actually this. The gearbox has not been taken apart. What, can I trust that gearbox? It's never been opened up. I would look at it and say to yourself, you wanna actually just go through the vehicle to make it safe. If something goes wrong on route and it lets you down, well, as long as it's not a safety issue. So I suppose the biggest thing for me would be the brakes. In the next video, I batter him with questions. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.